you've got any questions for Lincoln, please throw them over. He will be only too happy to answer them. Boom. So first question, and I'm not even going to ask you the normal question. Do you, do you find it easy to kind of put together those flows? It's funny, you know, going all the way back to when I set out in the days when we had answer phones, um, people say, hello, I'm not here. Leave a message after the beep. I decided to change it. Yeah, it was my phone number. I just say, ladies and gentlemen, this is 756266. Don't let this answer phone put you in a fix. Right now, the main man, he isn't here. So leave an after, leave a message and make it clear right now. Mr. Lincoln is not at home, but he's going to get you back on his telephone. Now that my message is almost through, you better take a big breath. <gasps> and it's over to you. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, I thought, I didn't think, when I was at, at school, teachers would say, write poetry. Yeah. I thought, I can't do this. Yeah. And then one day, I think it was the day that I got my house, and I'm talking 1992. Yeah, yeah. You know? So... Ever since then, just, you know, and I've never written a song, Nigel. I'm a, I'm a pianist. People say, you write, I haven't written any music and I haven't written any songs. I suppose if you say, right, Lincoln, um, I'm going to give you 12 months, put you in a room, write 10 albums, I'll write 10 albums. But I suppose, and, and all musicians who are watching this will, will tell you, like artists, they don't just sit and play all day. Yeah. You kind of have a deadline. You say, yeah. right, I've got to do this for that. Yes. So if, you, if, if somebody rang and said, Lincoln, we need you to write a music, musical by four o'clock, I'll do it. <laughs> if you tell me in my own time to just do it, yeah, yeah, I never get yeah. around to it. You know? yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic, man. Seriously, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have to do some kind of... Um, I'm going to get you in the studio, man. <laughs> get you without, the studio. without, without <laughs> a shadow of a doubt there, Nigel. Without a shadow of a doubt. So, Lincoln, um, for the people watching who don't know you, although I think that's, there's probably not many left now, um, can you tell them what you do for a business? What is your business, Lincoln? Playing the piano and teaching the piano. So um, I started officially professional when I was in my last year of music college. So in 1987, I started teaching the piano and I've been teaching Unbroken since then, privately. Um, I have done a little bit in schools, but I've always been a private piano teacher. Um, I got a break to be in the West End. And from there, I have just played. I've played in theatre. I performed for an organisation called Music in Hospitals. With, with tea, I talked about playing for the ill and the lame. I, 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 I do probably 50, 60 concerts nationwide. Um, care homes. I mean, I've played in so many care homes and... Uh, places uh, with children with uh, learning disabilities. I played at Acorn Hospice near you in uh, next door to Cabbage World. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then I do weddings. I've been doing weddings since I was 13. Um, average between 60 and 100 weddings every year. I've probably averaged that for the last 25 years. And I do wow. parties. So, uh, but I've also done concerts. Um, I've got a jazz trio. Um, perform with so we've we've I'm what I'm what you'd call a jobbing pianist I know people think that that's too simplistic but whatever I needed to do I do it you know in any style so you know somebody wants me to play Beethoven or accompany a violinist uh, was playing Elgar's cello concerto or I played at a, a bar mitzvah and I played all Jewish tunes and uh, as as the Indian fraternity will know I've done a few Indian weddings and I've done some Bangla too. So no, oh, you can play Bangla. Oh, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me a little, give me, give me, give me, give me ten seconds of Bangla, man. Just give me something. Well, the, the most popular one that the, the, the Indians live is that. goes over fences boundaries oh, of course cultures of course. um you know i um i'm i'm writing a a course at the moment for, for couples who are getting married but specifically for civil ceremonies i've done 
Greek, I've done Jewish, I've done um, the Hindu, uh, I've done Sikh weddings, I've done Irish weddings. Oh, I've wow. You know, it's two people, Nigel, it's two people that have fallen in love, saying their vows in front of their family and friends who are in their best clothes. The women gossip, the men talk about sport, and then we all dance to cheesy music. <laughs> I remember, that day. I remember that day well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and there's something that you said there about music crossing fences, crossing boundaries, because it is true, because you can go anywhere in the world, say Michael Jackson, and someone will go, hee-ha, or yeah, he, because of his music crossing all of those boundaries. So um, when did you start learning the piano? I started when I was... I started lessons when I was four. So I started lessons the day I started school. So your kids start in reception. So I went to reception and then at three o'clock, I went across the road, literally, um, to, to Molly Tomlin, who, who taught me. So my first day at school was my first day of piano lessons. Oh, but my wow. dad had been trying to teach his, himself for a year and a half before that. And uh, I left him behind. <laughs> Poor dad. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so that's what, that's where it all started, you know? So, so when did you decide that you were going to, I suppose... Be a musician? Well, be, I suppose have it as a, a, a way of life because, I, I mean, the thing is, yes, it is a business, but for me, it feels more like a way of life for you because you obviously like playing the piano, you like yeah. music, you like creativity, you like expressing emotion through music which to me is like wow that's like someone just paying you to be happy you know what i mean but <laughs> when did you because obviously you would have gone to school did you go to university college uh, yeah i went to music uh to royal academy of music um i i went to see the violinist yehudi menu when i was six yeah. uh, called festival hall this was a big concert live on the bbc um he came on, I mean, I, I didn't say, I played the violin as well, to a very high level. Um, he came on with his violin and played. Um, I just remember being captivated by him, his clothes, his demeanor. So I said to my dad, you know what? I'd like to wear nice clothes and play for nice people. And, but the thing that's always been big for me, and this has been from the start, is that I didn't want to play just for the, the wealthy, the powerful, or to play in the clubs or the pubs. I want to be able to play for everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I've played in castles. I've played for aristocracy. I've played for royalty. But I still play in my local social club, the pub around the corner. I've played I've played in all of the... Ch where I live in Duston, the people who know Northampton, the area of Duston, I've played in every church in Duston. I've played in every pub in Duston. Um, and there are different levels. You know, but I don't judge people. If people want me to play, I play. play. I don't say I'm not going to play for you. So, you know, big Irish wedding I did. Um, the, the the bride, I can't think of her name, Queen of Pilates, I call her. But she 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 celebrated her birthday. I remember going to their wedding, and they had never had a guy sit at a grand piano and play for them ever. And there I am sitting there playing Irish tunes, Irish ditties, and we had the best time the whole room was singing it's a long way to tip a baby it's a long way to go if you're Irish come into the parlour there is a well up there for you if you need and so on so on so you know, just 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 get in there find find the spirit level yes Sometimes, sometimes I've got to move for that spirit level, and sometimes people say, "Lincoln, just play." Yeah, you know, I did a. a I think the most dramatic wedding I've done to date: Jewish boy marrying an Indian girl. That was four trips to London. Uh, four to, trips. Yeah, two to see the couple in uh, Bray Cross. Then the Jewish rabbi. He lived in Teddington Lock, and the uh, the um, the guy who took the, um, the the Indian ceremony. He lived in Southall. And then I just, I was the master ceremonies. I played all the songs for the rabbi. There's about 11 songs. The Jewish folks that are watching will know in, the, in, their, in their ceremony, there's various phases. And there's one where, you know, the groom stamps on the cup. Um, it, it, it's quite deep, very cultural, very historical. 
Um, and I went through all of that music. And the thing that I will always remember, Nigel, is you've got the Indians that don't drink. You've got the Jews who want to drink. They want to eat meat. The Indians didn't eat meat. There's certain music they wanted. And at 7 o'clock, when it was all done, ceremony at 9.30, civil ceremony, followed by Jewish ceremony. Then we had tea. Then we had the Indian ceremony. Then we had another Indian ceremony. Then we had the meal. Then we had the string quartet. Then we had the sitar player. Then we had the speeches. And then we had the disco. And what was the first tune they had? First I was afraid, I was afraid. <laughs> and everybody, everybody was on the dance floor. The Indian <laughs> grandmother, I was told that I shouldn't upset. She dragged her husband. <laughs> oh, no, go. Poking him in the chest. Walk, walk out the door. Rising <laughs> in skull caps of moving, <laughs> busting traits. Oh, you, fantastic. Said, Look at that. Integration. Fantastic. Two people got married today and everyone's having a party. I can see the men arguing about Liverpool's best back four. Yeah. Whatever Sashin Tundalka should have played that shot. Oh, wow. People are people. They get together. Um, and, and I suppose this is the nice thing about the time that we spend together is that nobody nobody, nobody worries about where, where anybody comes from. People yeah. just get on. They yeah. do business. They yeah. get on. Yeah. And we have had, as you know, and all our friends know, the biggest laugh. Yeah. And yeah. all of that kind of other stuff is irrelevant because absolutely just... absolutely honestly well, in my mind's eye i can see this party man and i know that party would have been rocking seriously rocking it's like a re i went to my brother's wedding in germany i don't know if you've got much experience of the germans but stereotypical view is that they're quite serious yeah. and their sense of humor is slightly different to our own so um so my brother's getting married to a german girl um we all turn up the rabble brothers and sisters and um as you can imagine, you know, wasn't much colour in the room. And they kind of sat on one side and we sat on the other. But I'm telling you now, as soon as the music started, so we all got up and started dancing. And you could see them looking over thinking, oh, that looks rather interesting. We would like to get involved with that. Within 10 minutes, they're all up, shocking out. Uncle, what's his face? He looked like he was 105, was stepping with his stick. And it was absolutely amazing. But music... It, it just, it, you know, it just, it just brings people together. It's, a, just, it's like the glue that holds us together. Um, Lincoln, I would imagine that there's been challenges in your business or, or, or doing the business. Tell, tell us about some of the challenges that you've had to overcome. I think to come back to you, your lesson that you asked about becoming a, a, a pianist and a musician, I, I was always in love with the idea of being dressed up and playing. It's only when I got that West End job that I suddenly realised I had to join the union. Uh, I had to sign a contract. I didn't know what I was going to be paid, how I was going to be paid, the small details. And, and I kind of went from being this boy who taught 20 students and worked in McDonald's to being on BBC One and on ITV. I had people from Only Fools and Horses, EastEnders, Coronation Street, Crossroads, um, news readers, pastry girls, the general, uh, all the casts of all the soaps, they were all there. People that you and I watch on TV, suddenly they are in, they are in my peripheral vision. They are my reality. And then in the blink of an eye, I was back here in Northampton, in Dustin, with my best friend who was with me for, 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 the sh for some of the biggest shows. We're back in the pub talking about it and there are people around us that came up to me and said you know what i've been listening to your conversation you're a little bit deluded aren't you and i said well i've just been playing in the west end and they went yeah 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 and emotionally you can be here yeah and then you're here i played uh, a concert in london with julian andrew lloyd webber's brother julian lloyd webber he performed and then i came after the, the, the great and the grand of London, the glitterati, the people with titles. And then I'm playing in this coffee shop the next night <laughs> in the Wellingborough Road. And this lady came up to me and she said, you're not very good, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you're going to get any How, how dare she? How dare, how dare she? Now, I put a post on Facebook. Just, I, I, I said, 
Julian Lloyd Webber is warming up the stage for me. Yeah. And the guy who owned the coffee shop said, are you nervous about tonight? I said, no, but I'm nervous about your gig tomorrow. And as this woman came and gave me a load of grief, he realised the truth in the statement that I made in the post. Because there I was playing for all these fabulous people in London. And I was playing to 20 people in this room. Yeah. This woman came up to me and went, you're not very good, are you? You're not going to get much work. <laughs> and I thought, the irony, it's a bit like you, you, you and I love football. It's yeah. like, I remember um, when my wife and I first got together, Cristiano Ronaldo had only just signed for Man United. Yeah. And he came to six fields here at Northampton Town and played down the right wing and got booed. And people didn't take any notice of him. And there he was at six fields that holds just over 7,000. And now he's a global star and he's playing at Real Madrid yeah. for what three, four hundred thousand pounds a week. Yeah, yeah. you know. And and, I, and I, I remember thinking as he was playing that day, I wasn't there. I watched it live on Sky. This is Cristiano Ronaldo. He's getting booed by by you know us simple folk of Northampton. And then he's playing on the biggest, biggest stages in the most important. You know, literally within four years, I was at Old Trafford watching him playing against Messi for Man United, against Barcelona. And I and I think back to that day at the Cobblers. Being a performer is a bit like that. You're in yeah. this amazing, you're in a situation, like this afternoon I'm going to, I'm going to a, a, a funeral wake. The people that I'm playing for don't know that I might next week be playing for the Queen at yeah. Windsor Castle. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also you could be earning lots and lots of money and then you're, I would say I've never been in a situation where I've, I've had famine, but you certainly have emotional highs peak, and lows. Yeah, peak, peaks I, and troughs. Emo, it, financially, it's challenging. I mean, if Carl Ellsby, my accountant, is watching this, he'll tell you it's challenging because he yeah. has to get my books. Um, I would say that the greatest challenge is managing your emotions. It's going, it's playing, um, you know, playing on television yeah. or, or playing that big gig with loads of people getting loads of money and then waking up the next morning and doing something quite humble yeah um, yeah yeah it's, that's you've got to go from point to point to point to point to point you hear football managers say uh we take one game at a time yeah and it's the same here yeah you know yeah. you take every engagement every day um, you know, I played my first time on Facebook Live. I think I had 5,000 people watching me. I was right here. I was high as a kite. I then went into a piano lesson. I'm not going to mention my students. Um, but one of the boys, he went, oh, you just got up. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, man. Honestly, they're terrible. And, and, and I think there's something there which will resonate with a lot of people because, you know, as individuals, as business owners, as self-employed people, as partners... We have a, a range of emotions which we have to battle with. We yeah. have a range of thoughts which are, you know, telling us, hey, don't do that. Protect yourself. What about if someone criticises you? And and I think being able to kind of see the bigger picture and, and kind of realise this is how it is, I think that allows you to then manage it. Uh, and um, I definitely get the highs and the lows of doing something and then the next day it's like it's back to back to normality so oh. <laughs> so fantastic man oh fantastic um lincoln tell us one thing about oh, in fact before i ask you this hi mitra sorry mate i didn't know you should put a comment in good to see you too my friend thanks for joining us um tell us one thing about you lincoln but not many people know about and nothing that means your wife will shout at you. So <laughs> <laughs> I read that one before. But yeah. <laughs> um, when I, I, I mean, I was, a, I, I wanted to be a footballer, but I always, the piano was always in front of the football. Uh, the two jobs I wanted to do, if I hadn't have done football, is I wanted to be a sports journalist oh. or a football commentator. Oh, um, I'm a, I actually write a blog called The Maestro Talks Football. I haven't written a blog for two years, but I'm I'm currently writing one about the conclusion of the football season. And I I see I see myself as a Henry Winter, the guy who writes for the Telegraph. I'm I, I present arguments. I love I love arguing about football. I'm you know I haven't done it through lockdown, but if I go to a game, 
I ring Five Live and complain to Robbie Savage. Um, I, I, I do. You've got Lincoln on you. You know, I support Northampton. I support Middlesbrough. When I go to, whenever I go to a Middlesbrough game, I'm on the radio. Whether it's talk sport, it's, why Middlesbrough? <laughs> it's a long story, but it was a social experiment. Um, <laughs> there. I've been sporting Middlesbrough since I since I got married. I went to watch the Cobblers, Northampton Town, uh, two games. The first two games of the season. Uh, could you? I got married on July the third. I played forty one gigs in August, and I still managed to get to the first two Cobblers games, the, the, the Saturday and the Tuesday. Forty one gigs, and I still got to the first two games of the season. But I, two of the dully straws, and my wife said, "Why do you watch them? Why don't you watch somebody else?" So I decided I was going to watch the top four: Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man United. I went to Stamford Bridge, Champions League. Man United Champions League. Um, I couldn't get to Liverpool, but I have been since. And the only way I could get to Arsenal was at Middlesbrough. And <laughs> and I thought, you know, I, I love the North. I've got to say, I love the North East. It's one of my favourite parts of the country. Yeah. I, I can't say it's my favourite because I've played all over the country and I love every part of England, Scotland, Wales. We have such a wonderful country uh, aesthetically. But I do like the northeast. Arsenal peppered Middlesbrough's goal for 42 minutes. Yeah. And then in the, I think the 43rd minute, Yakubu did a turn, swung his foot, the ball hit the back of the net. Papa's got a brand new pig bag. Um, <laughs> the woman sitting next to me threw her arms around me and kissed me and I was cheering because she was cheering and in that moment I became a Middlesbrough fan. Wow. And all right, Middlesbrough went on to have an extraordinary European run. Oh, is that the, is that the, is that the year they lost three finals? Yeah, um, <laughs> that was the year they lost, uh, no, they lost two semi-finals and oh. they lost the, the Europa Cup final 3-0. And I went to, I, I, I lived through a lot of those games and I went to some of those games. But here's the thing, um, and, and, and this will be fascinating because social, there are lots of Man United fans, there are lots of Liverpool fans, there are lots of Arsenal fans, there are lots of Tottenham fans, there are lots of Chelsea fans. When people say to me, you know, what team do you support? And, you know, a scarf comes out. Um, <laughs> they go, oh, you haven't got a North East accent. And I say... You are a Manchester United fan, and you haven't got a oh, Lancastrian Lanc 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 Yeah. Now, can you tell me on Sir Matt Busby Way where the ground is? And a lot of them say to me, well, where's Matt Sir Matt Busby Way? <laughs> I said, but you're the fan. You're the fan. There are lots of Liverpool fans who have never, you know, have never been across Stanley Park. Yeah, yeah. Lots of Arsenal fans have never been to Holloway Road. Yeah. There's lots of Chelsea yeah. fans that have never stepped on the King's Road. Yeah. Um, so what, why are you more qualified to be a Chelsea fan than I am a Middlesbrough fan? You know, I, I just thought, I love this, look, the Middlesbrough folks that know me, and there's lots of them now, I go on the chats and I tr put my two and eight in and complain about team selection and got Neil Warner. You know, I've even got BBC North East on my TV. So when the regional news comes on, I can watch the regional news and I can see the team news for... Middlesbrough, Newcastle, Hartlepool, Sunderland. So I can talk like, <laughs> I, can, I, I do the whole thing. That's fantastic, you know. man. That is absolutely fantastic. I'll tell you what, because I, I listen to talk sport. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tune into Radio 5 next season. I want to I hear... Because <laughs> I like football. Football yes. is such a kind of... Uh, uh, it's one of those things that... You know, people have we have so much to say about it. We've all everyone's a football well, manager. Everyone's got Ev a everyone has got a, a bit better team selection, and it's so you know, so is it subjective is that the right word? Yeah. Um, but you can talk about I mean, you can put five guys in a pub and I'll talk for the whole day about the offside and best players in the world, and oh, it's amazing. And I, and I just don't think some people don't get it, they just don't get it. Un unfortunate souls. <laughs> so, um, um, Link, <laughs> yeah. but, um, well, I was, all I was going to say is that football is a, is a working man's game. Yeah. Um, traditionally, it is the heartbeat of a nation. If you want to know, if I'm in a town 
and I want to know what, what the heartbeat of that town is. I get them on the football team and everyone's got a view, whether it's Hartlepool, whether yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Carlisle, whether it's Manchester United, you know. I think, um, I think, I think originally, if you think about the way football is, because it was set up, you know, each town had their own club. If you think about it, it, it was very tribal, wasn't it? And it I still think, is, yeah. And, and it still is now, but I think that's why traditionally in the olden days, um, you know, the Oxford United supporters would probably live in Oxford. Yeah. Or to pick up a few fans around because of their performance when the media showed them on TV, whatever. But, um, you know, it's very... I mean, I support <clears throat> Aston Villa. Yeah. Um, the reason I reason I support Aston Villa, I'm completely honest with you, and I'll tell you now, and I'll tell everybody watching, is because everybody in my school supported West Bromwich Albion. So I thought, boo you lot, I'm going to do the opposite. And I did. And uh, ever since then, I've been happier than the Albion supporters. Um... I would say, yeah, much happier than the happy, uh, Albion supporters. And, uh, yeah, they're my team and I love them. And they can ruin my Saturday or they can make my weekend. Uh, you know, it's their choice. It's their choice. <laughs> or they can destroy my weekend or, or make me have a great weekend. So I get it, mate. I get it. Um, if somebody was crazy enough, Lincoln, right now to set up their own business, what three bits of advice would you give them? Well... Be, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Don't do it for the money. Money's important. Money is very, very important. But it cannot be the driver. No. Because if it's... I mean, in my line of work, I've dealt with some of the richest people you would ever meet and some of the poorest people. And what actually defines them is not what they have but their spirit, who they are. Um, which is why, uh, you know, at the top of the interview, I said that I will play for absolutely anybody. It's who they are, it's their integrity. Have integrity, be honest. Don't try to be something that you're not. Yeah. Um, be strong, be very clear about what you are bringing. I know, you, I know you will say, what is your why and your what? But you, you've got to know. Um, I know everybody that's, that's got a website has got a mission statement, but you've got to actually know. Um, that's not for aesthetics purposes. You've yeah. got to know yeah. what you're about. Yeah. I think yeah. the people who stay, the people who, have, who are in business, um, have principles and, and, and stick rigidly by them. Yeah. Those that are unable to stick by their principles morph into being employees. Yeah. You, you, you've, got to, you've got to be sometimes belligerent. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I will reluctantly say ruthless, but I mean this in the nicest possible way. You have really got to make some difficult decisions sometimes. Yeah. Um, and being in business, I mean, I've been self-employed. I've never been employed by anybody. I've always worked for Lincoln since the age of 21. Yeah. You know, I worked for companies. I swept floors. I've worked in warehouses. I worked in McDonald's. I've done all that. I, I did some tough jobs, stacking pallets, et cetera, et cetera. I've been on the factory floor and it kept me focused. Yeah. So I worked hard at the music, at the Royal Academy of Music. I think a lot of the people that I studied with didn't have that kind of experience. I've always had a real good handle on how real people live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say. You know, definitely a marathon, not a sprint. And uh, it's a long game. It really is a long game. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, we have got one more question, but I'm going to, I'm going to add one more because I've, I've been thinking this ever since we met. How on earth do you remember all of the songs? I mean, you literally will turn to that piano and whatever you're thinking I want to play, you're just... How, how, how? I mean, are we talking like, are you practising these songs over and over and over and over and over and over again? I mean, there's a point where I suppose the, 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 the music just becomes ingrained within your body because you turn and go... And it's out there, it's playing. How do you do it? <laughs> um... I think 
when I saw Yehudi Menu in that day, he didn't have any music. So I thought, you know, when you perform, you've got to perform without music. So I learned how to perform without music. When I got to, when I was 16, I got a scholarship to go to a teacher in London before I went to the Royal Academy of Music. And he taught me how to memorise pieces. Um, so, you know, look at a section, learn it. I suppose um, I've always been a fan of Tom and Jerry. Tom oh, yeah. and Jerry, you've before got the music. Be, before it became PC. <laughs> yeah, before it became, you know, you, you, you've got the music that matches the action. Yes. Now, this is where in my weddings, people that know me from the weddings that I've yeah, done yeah. will know that I will sit and play the scenario that's in front of me. Yes, you'll play, you'll play the room. You'll play the room. I'm going to play the room. So I don't have 100 tunes, you know, that start with, I do like to be beside the seaside and finish with the entertainer. I'm playing what's in front of me. So the music is like the cartoon, yeah? So you've got six kids in a row, followed by, with dad leading the way, and I play hi-ho, hi-ho, it's yeah. off to work we go. Yeah. I have pictures in my head, and what I've, I suppose, all, what I've done all my life is I've tried to find tunes to match the pictures in my head. Yeah. So I play the tunes that I, 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 I play the tunes that I dream about. Um, and I suppose 50 plus years later, I've got, I've got better and better as time's gone on. I've always played to my friends yeah. and I've always laughed about. So if you stop anyone that went to school with me here in Dustin, they'll say Lincoln played football and he played the piano. Yeah. Um, and he entertained us. Yeah. I always entertained. I played, I did the serious stuff when I was at the academy. If someone said, entertain me, I would be the person that could entertain. Wow. I didn't realise that had value yeah. until I got that job in the West End. Yeah. Because I noticed that some of my colleagues were only able to play what they could play. Yeah. They just couldn't flip it. And yeah. I've been able to, I've always in my head wanted to flip it. And yeah. I didn't realise that that was going to give me an advantage. It does. But it puts your personality right front and centre. Front and centre, you do. Yeah. And, you know, I've been in meetings where you literally have played three or four tunes, one after the other, to explain the mood or the person or the individual in the room. And it's, it's absolutely amazing. And, um, you know, people watching, listen to me now. You need to seek out Lincoln. Do you have a YouTube channel? Yes. Go yeah. and seek out Lincoln on YouTube. This this guy is a wizard when it comes to that piano. I mean, you know, he's making spells every time he touches those keys because you're just you're being captivated. And and what's even more amazing is he can sing at the same time. I mean, <laughs> hey, he's bad enough just playing, but they're having to sing. I mean, I can't even type on the keyboard and sing at the same time. Hello, my, hello. My. <laughs> Right, sir. Is there anything that the people watching can do to help you right now? Oh, currently, I am uh, doing 30 tips for every day in June. Wedding wow. tips. Fantastic. Uh, where, can we, wedding where, tips. Where, where can we see that? On all social media. So here on Facebook, on my page, Lincoln Noel the Maestro. On LinkedIn, Lincoln Noel the Maestro. On Instagram, Tinkling Lincoln the maestro tinkling um so 30 tips i'm giving to camera every day a different tip there's a, a thursday's tip is already there and also i'm playing 30 wedding tunes for every day in june so uh, uh tuesday i did here comes the bride um the, and uh wednesday i did the tune from father of the bride canon in d today i did you're just too good to be true. I played that one. Uh, I can't reveal what I'm doing. Uh, we've got a, I've drafted up a list of 30 of my most popular wedding songs. So diverse. Wow. So uh, that's going to be worth watching. I do commemorative video telegrams for people's birthdays. These have gone all around the world. Yeah. Um, North, South America, Europe, South Africa, China, wow. Australia um russia um yeah uh, south america i i'm uh, central america i my telegrams are everywhere so anybody out there who's looking to give somebody a, a unique gift or you know somebody who's stuck for a gift come and see me let's have a chat and what i do is i put the music of choice for that person so you know i don't sit here and play i don't know the entertainer and elvis and the beatles if what they actually like is Oasis, the Happy Mondays, and Pulp and Coldplay. So what, or, what, what happens if you get a tune that you you haven't come across before? 
Well, 60% of the tunes I've been doing, I've never played before. So, I mean, obviously I can sight read. I, Nigel, we live, in a, we live in a world where anything that's out there that's published is in music, on music school. If it's not, and this is what I had to do in the 80s and the 90s, is I can listen to a tune, get my manuscript paper and write it down and then I can play it. So, boo, 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 boo. you know, um, I had a couple of darts players who had a dart song that I'd never heard of. And I had to play that. They walked out to that. And of course, during the signing of the register, I played Bullseye. So. <laughs> what a day! <laughs> you, don't get, you don't get two for two in the bed. <laughs> um, right. So, so what I'd like you to do when we finish is go back to this video on the Love Sales Hate Selling Facebook business page. And I want you to drop all your links, LinkedIn, Facebook, your course, your website, everything. Put it all in there so that people who want to reach out to you can. Now, um, we are going to go because um, we've gone on slightly longer. I knew, I knew we would anyway. But um, I have a request. Is there any chance that you could play Three Little Birds, Bob Marley? Just for you. Just for you. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. Let me don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. Wake up this morning, eyes are the rising sun. Three little birds. pleasure sir absolute pleasure thank you so much for joining us today people watching lurkers replayers please reach out to lincoln if you want some musical inspiration in your life or in the life of somebody that you love or care about because this is the man who can raise the levels and the energy of anyone that he comes into contact with lincoln thank you um if you want to reach out to lincoln he's gonna drop all of his links etc in the comments and thank you for joining us today lincoln i'll see you on the other side Goodbye for now, people.